Hi, I'm Dr. Evan Matthews. I'm here at Montclair State University to show you how to use a lancet gun in order to take a very small blood sample. And with that small blood sample, we're going to do a lactate measurement and a glucose measurement, so a blood glucose measurement. All right, so when you are working with a biohazard like blood, you need to make sure that you are protecting yourself from that biohazard. So you need to be wearing shoes that are closed so that there is no exposure of your feet. You need to be wearing pants that uh, prevent any exposure of your legs. You should be wearing some sort of lab coat that protects most of the rest of your body. Then you need to be wearing gloves that protect you from anything that's gonna get spilled on your hands. And you need to be wearing some sort of um, protective eyewear that's going to have some side shields as well as a, a lot of coverage to your eyes to prevent any splashes from getting to your eyes. All right, so when you're trying to get a small amount of blood from a finger, um, typically what you're gonna use is what's called a lancet. So there's lots of different types of lancets and lots of different types of lancet guns. So there are single-use lancets, which I don't have one uh, here for you, um, but uh, what's a cheaper option, a more economical option, is to use these sort of lancet guns that are reusable and to just use um, one-time use lancets. So essentially this is a little needle inside of a um, piece of plastic, and this top rounded part is going to be um, twisted off. So I'm just going to twist it off once I get into the gun, and that's going to expose the needle. All right, so this is just one version of a gun. They all work a little bit differently, but um, there's a lot of similarities as well. So if you know how to use this one, you can probably figure out the other ones. Um, essentially here, what we're going to do is we're going to pull off the top or twist off the top, depending on the type of gun. So that was a little bit of a twist off. And then we have this uh, hole here where the lancet's going to go. So I'm just going to push the lancet in there firmly. And it just gives a little bit of um, resistance uh, it fits in there nice and snug. And then I have, again, this rounded part that holds where the actual tip of the needle is going to be. So hold the base of the lancet so you don't pull it out of the device. And then just give a little twist. A little twist and then a pull. And there's the needle. So it's a little tiny needle. Um, you can see it in there. It's shining. And then what we're going to do is we're going to very carefully put the top back on the lancet gun. Okay, so the lancet's in. I took the top off of the needle, so the needle is exposed. In order to load the, the gun or to ready it, you're just, for this version at least, you're just gonna grab this back part and just pull back until you see this uh, button here kind of pop out towards you. There it was. And then I can let go of the back and now it's ready to go. So now all I have to do is push on this button and you're not going to see it, but there's a little tiny needle that's going to pop out the end of that. So once the lancet gun is ready to use, we're simply going to take the finger, we're going to clean it with a little bit of alcohol so we can make sure that it's going to be as sanitary as possible for the person, allow that alcohol to dry, and then firmly press the lancet gun onto the finger and push the trigger button to uh, allow the lancet to go into the skin and pierce the skin slightly. Think of it like a tube of toothpaste, squeeze a little bit of blood out of the, um, of the hole that you created, and then wipe that first drop of blood away with some sort of absorbent tissue, um, something that's going to keep the area clean, like a Kim wipe or a piece of gauze. Um, once you have done that, you've wiped away that first drop of blood, squeeze another drop of blood out, and then you're ready to use that drop of blood. So the reason we wipe the first drop of blood away is because it's going to have a little bit of alcohol residue in it and that can mess with some of the measurements that you might want to do. Once you place it into the lactate analyzer, you're going to see that the screen turns on and that tells you that it's ready to be used. Once that screen is on, you do need to use that lactate strip within probably about 10 or 15 seconds. Otherwise, it's going to either turn off or deactivate. So make sure that you put the strip in after you have the drop of blood ready and that you immediately put it in contact with the drop of blood. When you try to put the drop of blood onto the strip, you're not really putting it on the strip, you're putting it at the end of the strip. All right, so if you look closely, each strip has a little tiny channel at the end. You want to put the drop of blood at the end of that channel and it's going to suck the blood into it using capillary action. If you put the finger with the blood directly on top of the strip, so on top of that channel, or underneath the strip, on the underneath it of that channel, it's going to give you an error reading. So you want to get it just at the very tip of the, the strip, 
allow the blood to be sucked up by the strip, and that's where you're going to typically get a good reading. So performing a blood glucose measurement is exactly the same as performing a blood lactate measurement. You're going to use a glucometer instead of a lactate meter. That's the only real difference. So you're going to take the um, glucometer and the glucose strip, and you're going to put a put the glucose strip into the glucometer, it'll activate the screen on the glucometer, and then you simply put the tip of the strip where the channel is against the, the edge of the bubble of blood that you create on the finger, and it's gonna suck that blood into the strip just like it did with the lactate. So it, a few seconds later, um, then you're gonna get a measurement, and that is your blood glucose level. So that was a really quick overview on how to do blood lactate or blood glucose. Both of them are very simple to do. They have almost identical uh, methods, just with different machines and different strips. Um, each of those are something that can be used to uh, get uh, some information about the health or the physiology of the individual. And they're very common measurements in an exercise physiology type lab. So I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, you can put them in, com in the comment section below and I'll try to answer those. Otherwise, please come back and watch another video. Thanks.